So there are many proofs of the Pythagorean theorem, and today I'd like to look at one that involves using the area of an equilateral triangle. But before we do that, I'd like to partially derive the area of an equilateral triangle. I say partially derive because to fully derive it easily at least, you actually need the Pythagorean theorem, and we're gonna try to keep this from being circular. Okay, so let's start with a triangle of this form. So we've got vertices A, B, and C, and the sides opposite those vertices have side length lowercase a, b, and c. And then I'm gonna call this angle, which is at vertex C, theta. Okay, great. And then what we're gonna do now is drop an altitude from C down to line segment A, B. So let's see if we can get this nice. Okay. So there we have that. And then that's gonna naturally split this angle theta into two parts. And let's, let's give some names for those parts. So I'm gonna call this right here angle measure alpha, and I'll put that in blue, or in pink I should say. And then this right here, we're gonna call that angle measure beta, and so that's gonna be in blue. And sort of obviously we have theta is equal to alpha plus beta. And next up, I'm going to give the name h for the altitude or the length of the altitude. That's kind of standard. And then I'm going to say that this line segment A to C has length x, and then this line segment C to B has length y. Okay, nice. And now we can use this fact right here, which I don't think we need to prove, and that is area triangle ABC on the one hand is going to be one half times h times c. So that's one half base times height. But now I'm going to rewrite that as one half h and then x plus y. Because observe that c can also be expressed as x plus y. I think that's pretty clear. And now we're going to do the following. I'm going to write this as a times b over two, and then h over a times x over b, and then I'm gonna add that to h over b times y over a. So that might seem kind of crazy, but let's observe that if I were to distribute that a times b through, I would cancel those a times b in the denominators, and I would have hx plus hy, which is gonna be exactly what we have just above. And you might say, well, why would we do that? Well, let's observe the following. Let's observe that h over a is the cosine of beta, whereas x over b is the sine of alpha, and then vice versa for the other terms. So h over b is the cosine of alpha, and then y over a is the sine of beta. So that means that we can take this and rewrite it as the following. We have a times b over two, and then we'll have cosine of alpha sine of beta plus sine of alpha cosine of beta. I've perhaps written it in a slightly different order than it is just above, but I've written it in a way so that it corresponds to the angle sum identity. And I'm not gonna prove that here, but that can be proven without the Pythagorean theorem. So that means we're still not circular. And so using that angle sum identity, we'll see that in the end, we'll get a times b over two times this sine of theta. But the way that I really wanna write that is maybe sine of theta over two in parentheses times a times b. So now let's apply that to an equilateral triangle. So there I've got my equilateral triangle down there, and kind of obviously all of the angles are 60 degrees, so I could put 60 degrees right there, and then all of these sides are x. So that's gonna give me the area of this equilateral triangle as sine of 60 degrees over two times x squared. But I'm not going to calculate the sine of 60 degrees. What I'm going to do is just call that sine of 60 degrees over 2 some constant. And so what we have is that the area of an equilateral triangle is some constant 
times the square of the side length. And that's actually all we're gonna need for our proof. We won't need to know exactly what that number is. Okay, so let's get into it. So thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. So we just finished arguing that the area of an equilateral triangle was equal to alpha, some constant, and that constant is the same for all equilateral triangles, times the side length squared. And so now what we'll do is launch into our proof of the Pythagorean theorem where we will use this partial area formula for the area of an equilateral triangle. So let's start with our right triangle. So let's say it has vertices A, B, and C, and opposite side lengths, lowercase a, b, and c. And let's say that C is the right angle, or the angle at vertex C is right. And then that makes the side length C our length of our hypotenuse. And so now what we're gonna do is fix vertex B and rotate the triangle 60 degrees. And then we're going to repeat that, fixing vertex A, and rotate the triangle 60 degrees the other direction. And since we're doing a 60 degree rotation in those two directions, let's observe that we get a nice intersection of those two new triangles that we've created. We'll call that intersection point D. And then we can add some line segments into the situation and you'll see that we have an equilateral triangle along side length A of our original triangle and also an equilateral triangle along side length B of our original triangle. And kind of naturally built here is also a parallelogram with uh, the vertices that we're now, now calling C, C1, D, and C2. And now the game is to calculate the area of this big region we've made two different ways. First, as the area of the original triangle, plus the area of this yellow equilateral triangle, plus the area of the parallelogram, plus the area of the blue equilateral triangle. And then the second way we'll calculate the area of this big region is via this kind of larger equilateral triangle. And then the area of these two triangles that have arisen from the rotation of our original triangle. So both of those are gonna have the area of our original triangle. Okay, so in the end, that gives us this following equation. And now let's see if we can simplify that a little bit. Well, let's observe that I have two area A, B, C on one side of the equation, and I've got one on the other side of the equation. So I can cancel one of those down. And then I can start performing our calculation. So let's notice that area of B, C1, C2 is going to be alpha times A squared. So let's maybe color code this a little bit. That comes from that area right there, and that's because that's an equilateral triangle with side length lowercase a. And then let's see, this area of triangle A, C, C2 is going to be alpha times B squared. And again, that's because that's an equilateral triangle with side length B. Again, we're using this formula that we derived for the area of an equilateral triangle. And then we're gonna have plus, and I'll just bring this down, the area of the parallelogram C, C1, D, C2. And then in turn, we're gonna have that be equal to the area of, well, this thing that I'm underlining in green, triangle A, D, B. But that's an equilateral tri triangle with side length C, so we can write that as alpha C squared, plus, well, the area of our original triangle but it's pretty easy to show that the area of our original triangle is A times B over two. So now let's observe that we're pretty much done or we're completely done if we can show that the area of that parallelogram is equal to the area of our original triangle. And the parallelogram in question looks like this. So it has side length A and B. And via some fairly elementary angle chasing, you'll see that this angle right here is 30 degrees. 
And now we're gonna use the fact that the area of a parallelogram is gonna be equal to one of the bases times an altitude. So we'll take this base B and then we'll drop an altitude right here. And so now all we have to do is figure out the length of that green altitude there. But that calculation can be made by duplicating this triangle over here on the left in the following orientation. So we'll duplicate it and flip it over. And so this will be side length A as well. And then we'll have a 30 degree angle right here. But then that means we've got a 60 degree angle and two side lengths of A, which means what we've done is created an equilateral triangle. But since we've created an equilateral triangle, that means that this length right here and this length right here are the same and they sum to A meaning that this is a over two. But that means that we can use our formula for the area of a parallelogram. And in this case, we'll get a over two times b. So that means that we can go up here and replace this area of this parallelogram with a b over two. But now check it out what we have. We've got this alpha a squared plus alpha b squared plus a b over two is equal to alpha c squared plus a b over two. But of course, what we can do now is see that alpha, alpha a squared plus alpha b squared equals alpha c squared. And then dividing by alpha, we'll get a squared plus b squared equals c squared as needed. And that's a good place to stop.